Hey, what's going on, guys? It's what's up? CNL podcast coming at you for X. X. X, number X, or number 10. Mm-hmm. I guess it wouldn't be, it'd be letter X. Letter X. How does that number work? Number 10. Number 10. How does that, is that, X. we're doing nu- r- numeral, Roman numerals. Ramen noodles. Ramen noodles. <laughs> this episode, we wanted to dabble into horror movies again. I think we mm-hmm. want to do some more horror films because there's more really good, um, not even old school horror films, just they're kind of like new style. Um, we'll get into all the good ones coming out. Uh, I want to, we've got subjects we want to talk about for days. Um, I wanted to start by saying that I've been watching a lot of, uh, the Michael Jackson, uh, leaving Neverland type uh-huh. stuff. Oh yeah, that Michael Jackson okay. stuff's been popping up lately. It's coming back. Yeah. You know, almost a decade after he died. Yeah. The crazy shit is about this whole thing is that there's so much evidence on both sides. There really is. You it's don't, you're you're questioning you, it. You don't really see that. Like usually one side's more circumstantial and the other's, you know, right. has physical evidence. It's kind of blatantly obvious. <laughs> And and Michael Jackson's one of those things that seems like it would be blatantly obvious, but right. it's it's so <clears throat> questionable. But and it's almost like did he brainwash people before? Yeah, but at the same time, you know, maybe he wasn't just a silly little wacko motherfucker. You know, like maybe, you know, maybe he did his you know his fair share of shit. But I mean, I'm I'm still on the fence that he actually. I can't say he did, but I certainly can't say he didn't. Yeah. Because there's so much evidence on both sides. You're right. I the think. victim stories uh, are consistent every mm-hmm. time they tell it. But see, my thing is they keep flipping back and forth. Okay, they right. can't choose whether he did it or he didn't. If if you're consistently telling two different stories, it's not much for consistency at all, you know. That's what I'm saying. But the details stayed consistent, so it's like that's true. They but they've probably had years to talk about it too, mm-hmm. and, and and all these things. That's it's hard true. to say. Um, a lot of people are jumping straight on like fuck Michael Jackson, uh-huh. and there's a that's lot true. of like. Um, Michael Jackson fans that are sticking uh-huh. up for him and like threatening people that are coming out and saying things about Michael oh, wow. and all this. Yeah, he's got wow. like a little army and shit. It's weird. Well, you know, there's, there's people out there like, ah, oh, just just let him die. They're very passionate about yeah, it, yeah, you know, because he can't speak for himself. Mm-hmm. But I think people are ultimately curious as to whether it happened or not because it's so. It seems so it's obvious. True. Like, wow, that of it course it happened. He slept in bed with a bunch of kids, right? But then, you know, you start to hear the whole story. You start to hear these things. I heard an interview with Macaulay Culkin, and it was a really Uh good point he made. He said, you're talking when when you say you slept in Michael Jackson's bedroom, he's like, you have to think about who Michael Jackson is. His bedroom is like two stories. Uh, It's huge. His bedroom consists of like two stories. He's like, there's so many. His room is basically a few levels to a house. Right. You know. And that's what Macaulay Culkin was saying was, of course, people have slept in his room. That's where his, the main, that's the main right. thing. that they, It's Michael's room. And there's just so many different, I guess, other rooms. That's a whole house to me. Right. You know? Yeah, I see what you, yeah, I see what he's saying. It but, wasn't like they're all piled on one bed. Yeah. But it would also be very sick and twisted if Michael had planned f- to get these famous people you know, on his side, Corey Feldman, Macaulay Culkin, mm-hmm. and then he has an alibi and people sticking up for him. Like, well, that never happened to us, and we went around as I children. Don't, I don't think that, like, I hate to say it, like, I, I'm not sure if he really sat down and thought it all r- out like that, really. I mean, really, if, if you look at his behaviors and shit, uh, all the time he, he was doing things that were just just super impulsive and didn't think them through, making bad decisions, saying or, uh, uh, damaging things mm-hmm. to his credibility, uh, uh, holding his baby over a balcony. He did do some know, pretty babbling some things. Yeah. Rash, it says some uh, uh, bought a monkey, live with it. You know, which is not wrong to have a monkey, but you know, you know, like just he needed. You know, he wasn't. Uh, he always used the excuse say? that he never got a childhood, and he was trying to relive right. his childhood. Um, if he didn't do it. He was one of the coolest people on earth. If he if he didn't do that and he was just accused of it, and it turns out he never he, did any of these things. He was just a super talented, he was a super uh, kind of weird dude. But might hey, have had mental you know, issues. Yeah. And and the thing is, is if you you got to look deep into all sides of it, because it it goes so far back as to his childhood when like you know Joe, their dad was beating uh-huh. them and shit, and like training them to become these 
super keen artists and and things like this you start to hear things like latoya saying that um you know joe used to sexually abuse them right. and she often wonders if that was happening to everybody else you know mm-hmm. she wrote a book about it yeah and it's it's strange to think about because it's like if he was doing that to his children that would make sense as to why perhaps michael has issues <clears throat> yeah I you mean, know what i mean there is always that route because you know, it seems like a lot of abusers ended up abused at some point. It's true. You know what I mean? It a just of, it just fucked. A me. lot of abusers come from you know histories of 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 abuse. You know, it's a it's a, it's like a learned habit that's passed on, like you know little monkeys do for each other, yeah. teach each other how to crack nuts open. When it's just one of those, you know. And I mean, to really boil it down to a base form, it's scary to think about all these people that are like die hard for him. You know what I mean? Like they, cr- you know, yeah. He had so many people that just loved him. It, it was so weird. It's, it's almost like when we talked about the cult leaders and the peacock right. thing. Right. He has he that, and it's him. almost like he's, he's capable so of manipulating kind of people. wielding that, mm-hmm. you know, using that for his game. He comes off innocent and shy, eh, yeah. you know, but he's really like a psychopath. Right. Well, but I, he might have been a psychopath, but I, I lean I don't more think he towards... Was that conniving, though. I, don't I saw... Or, or that's maybe, what I'm saying, is he seemed... It, it all seemed way... It, it seemed like he had some kind of mental disorder because mm-hmm. he missed out on his childhood, and that, right. that was about it. Like it, did, it really didn't some seem. Abuse, and he yeah had a different kind of childhood growing up. He was. It was. Uh, it's one of those things that it's like, it's weird how you can look at uh, OJ or R. Kelly and say fuck they did it. You know what I mean? We have evidence they did it, but with Michael, yeah. it's like so spread out. I know, and you're, you're just getting bombarded. Um, mm-hmm. With evidence on both sides, uh, you know, maybe that's the whole master plan of the thing is to keep people <laughs> I thrown think off the actual trail because that would do that like effectively. Mm-hmm. It really would. It's working. I think the parents I are know. as ju- just as much to blame. It's true. They they took paydays basically. It was like giving them gifts, and I they were coming around. And he lived with a, a boy in his family uh, named his name was Wade Robinson, mm-hmm. and um. They would. He pretty much lived with them and stuff, and it's it's such a strange situation. I've been watching all kinds of stuff so about weird. that, and it's it just because it's trending. I guess it's just mm-hmm. all over the place right now. It's like nine eleven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it for me. It's kind of like a, I, you know, I would like to you know definitively know like what happened, but like, dude's dead, dude. Like I don't think like yeah. you know like it's gonna take a lot to really actually find that out and to make it public Mm -hmm. i mean like damn if he had any evidence at all i'm sure he destroyed it before he went you know right so it's like one of those things and that's a thing that like if 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 because we talked about conspiracy theories and if he really did die okay which Mm -hmm. is 90 percent likely yeah that's that's the deal most likely that's what's happening i feel like he got hooked to shit like propofol because he was so fucked up in the head from his yeah. life, and it, and it, he uh, thought he was out of that darkness, and the darkness came back and bit him in the ass. So like. he found his escape, you know, abused it, mm-hmm. uh, could afford to, well, kind of, and could have, did afford to do that for, and like, and then even so much to the point uh, he was administering it himself. Yeah, it's, you know what I mean, and that's. That is <laughs> that was irresponsible on the doctor of the part. doctor. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! If there was any criminal activity, for sure, we know that that's true. And he did get charged for that, right? And and whatnot. You Rightfully so. Yeah. There, there's a reason why we have medically trained professionals and doctors and paramedics. He should know better. Yeah, the, he pretty uh, much killed him. You, you know, can't, help kill you can't him, yeah. give somebody that kind of a drug and let them self administer. Mm-hmm. Like that's the quickest way to have somebody dead. Guess what happened? Yeah, you know, A, and B. It's one of those things we'll that's see. so that that like I said, it's so spread out. There's there's you hear video, uh, you hear recordings of the father of Wade uh, saying all these things mm-hmm. like I'm I'm gonna sue him and they're gonna be destroyed, and then the other person's like, well, does that help your son out at all? And he says that's irrelevant to me. Your son is irrelevant. That's your son is irrelevant. To it him? may be out of context. Because I I can't say you right. know what I mean. It's one bit to a phone call, but I in mean, my opinion, dude was just worried about revenge and uh, wanted money. <sighs> Fuck your money! If you if you touch my kid, you're dead. Yeah, 
I'm going to prison, buddy. There's no yeah. my kid's fucked up for the rest of his it's life. Not, it's not gonna be like I'm gonna get my lawyer. It's like no, you're gonna. I'm not gonna, gonna be gonna saying catch anything because I'm too busy running at you. Nobody takes pleas and twenty five million dollars, and you know nobody takes hush money. Those people were selfish as fuck. Oh man, and they knew it. You know, oh, I th- I'm, I feel I th- I think there was a story like. His father was out of the picture until the kids started hanging out with Michael, and Michael took an interest in him. They did right. a commercial together, and Michael started living with him, hanging out with him, taking him everywhere, being friends with him and all this, Right. which is a grown man and a kid being friends. A little strange, because I know no other grown men besides pedophiles that want to be friends with a child. Mm-hmm. Come here, buddy. Like, sit on my lap, and we'll watch YouTube. That's fucked up. I mean, I'm sorry. Well, you know, that's not your kid. Well, <laughs> that's yeah. a little fucked up. Yeah. But yeah. I totally get why why people because I see both sides. It's so crazy. You cannot yeah. dismiss the victims. You certainly can't dismiss any victim that and claims that. I feel really bad. Like if he actually like really did do this, you know, um, I feel really bad for all those kids because they're the they are the victims in this, and they've never gotten any sort of justice at all. Right, but that's on them because they've waited so long. That's what's wrong with the hashtag well, Me Too movement is because you've waited thirty years. They didn't sit around as a group of kids saying like, "Hey, let's extort Michael Jackson for money." Like, no, they were too busy well, eating cotton parents. candy mm-hmm. and having the time of their fucking lives, dude. Yeah, let's let's not fucking bring the house down with MJ. MJ's Bring dead. It. We're bringing it down. You know, we didn't talk about uh, Richard Pryor's shit. We won't talk about Michael Jackson's shit. Yeah, yeah Even though we kind of already have. <laughs> <laughs> somebody said uh, somebody said he had a wig. Like, he, he did not have real hair because oh, of that Pepsi commercial. <laughs> fucked up his head so bad. Who knows if that's true. <sighs> Some I, saw his he- I saw his head after they fucking patted him out. Dude, he still had hair. You don't just you don't just lose some hair because some of your hair got burnt off. You know right. It does, it's not work like it doesn't look like that. Well, that's irrelevant. It's, anyway, not, it's, it's not Christmas <laughs> lights, dude. You know, bust the bulb and it all goes out. You know. Um, I wanna I wanna get into horror. That's the whole. I I love horror movies. We'll probably talk so much about horror movies on this fucking podcast. It just is what it is. Right. Um, I wanted to start with Jordan Peele. Jordan. Because it it I I always love and we talked about Danny McBride taking. Him and David Gordon Green going from comedies, really funny comedies, mm-hmm. to straight to Halloween. Right. I think it's interesting that these comedians are coming out, these funny-ass people that you're, like, laughing your head off at, and then they can get dead serious and scare the fuck right. out of you. Okay? One of those people's Jordan Peele. Peele kills when he makes a horror film. He makes... Uh, and, and the thing is, he's made a new style. Like, it wasn't monsters, it was people. Right. And I like that, I like that concept because he made it so creepy that this could really happen. Right. You know what I mean? I, I loved uh, Get Out. Get Out was amazing. Right. Um, it was, It was. you feel like it's racially charged, which it is. It's It's a lot mm-hmm. about race. But it's, there's an undertone of like class as well. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, if you haven't seen Get Out, check that out. That's, that movie's crazy as hell. I saw some of it. The, the, it's. <sighs> it took me about 10 or so minutes though, but I was with people. It was a, it was a, any movie about rich people that take over. That's like right. like uh, three. Uh, what was it? Thirty. Well, thirty one. Rob Zombie's thirty one. At the end, when they put on their suits and ties, and they look like uh, presidential people and mm-hmm. people in you know government and teachers and all this, they were just you know business people. It's weird. Right. That's scarier because that can happen. You know, and I think that's the new. You know, that's going to take over. Because he's putting out, Jordan Peele's putting out a new movie um, called Us. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you've seen the preview for this. I have not. But it is about a family who, uh, from what I got from it, is being attacked by them. It's 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 people that are, th- it's them. It, the other people are them. It's It was oh. such a strange film. It's the whole family right over here, but they're right. little, they're creepy. And they're stalking the other family, and they're like, what the fuck? And they find out it's themselves. And they, I, I want to see that really bad because I'm like, I wow, see that now. yeah, I le- he's getting psychological horror. He's, he's uh, in, you know, he's he's showing us who the real monsters are, and it's us, it's us. Remember, uh, uh, have you ever seen a uh, Futurama? Uh, at the end of one of the episodes, the professor in this cosmic microwave that he has throws every worst, terrible uh, part of every animal. In this in this microwave, it's like it's all the worst, terrible parts. This is going to be an evil, monstrous monster, like the the worst in the known universe. 
and 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 the timer dings and the door opens up and it's a it's a it's a little human and he goes oh it turns out it's a human <laughs> you know and it's right it's totally right you like know, we, we we are the monsters are the only species in our world that can destroy our world mm-hmm. you know what i mean like yeah, we're the. It's well, mind boggling when you when you look at the bigger picture. We shit, are the you're monsters, like, why, man. Why would any creature sit on what we sit on this beautiful place and turn it into a dump? Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Only humans are that fucking stupid. That's what it's. But anyway, it's crazy. okay, that's anyway. we're getting a little off track. But the 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 point is, he's coming out with these psychological thrillers, mm-hmm. and because of this, there is a movie coming out called get home safe get home safe. and i don't know if you've seen the preview for this i have not um you should you should check these out because they look really cool um these kids these high school kids find a place to party and it's called mama's house or whatever it's like uh, this lady called mama or whatever right some shit like that i i've seen the preview once and it caught my eye and it reminded me of jordan pills movies but it's it's taking that same premise of they she lets them in their basement you can party here you can drink here and she's drinking with them and they're having a great time partying but then she starts like getting on their phone and be like, "Why aren't you coming over?" Like she starts getting weird with them. And oh. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, that's a good concept too. I wouldn't mind seeing that. But it reminds me a lot of what Somebody Jordan Peele's going, doing. Like, fucking swim fan on your yeah. ass. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the people who made Get Out are making that film right. as well. Yeah, it was really it looked interesting as all hell. I think the psychological mm. stuff's crazy, crazy as hell. Yeah. Definitely. Um, you know, uh, it's it's a lot different from Rob Zombie's films. And all these, um, almost like they're kind of like old school grindhouse films, and nobody mm-hmm. makes those anymore. But Zombie, Zombie tries to do the old school set in the seventies style mm-hmm. all the time. You know that whole uh, I get. You know, and it, and it goes back to like the seventies and eighties for horror was a huge, huge. I kind of like really love that that era. Mm-hmm. Like the best era of horror films are seventies yeah. and eighties. Period. And like, and like the fucking cheesier. And shit, the better. The 80s was great for cheese. The mm-hmm. better, you know, like... If you notice that, because it started it. to get... It started to get very violent in the late 70s. Or even in the late 60s it's true. and 70s. Oh, I mean, and I'm fucking... Uh, uh, the Evil Dead, dude, she's raped by a tree. What's up? Oh, yeah, I watched the remake the other night, and I forgot how much I absolutely love the remake mm-hmm. and what they did with that. It's so good. The uh, the The fact that she's sitting there... And she's dumping the drugs out, and and this whole time, it's it's, she's going through a withdrawal process. So they're like they're thinking, oh, she's just wigging out because right. she's going off the drugs. No, she's like seeing an apparition in the woods and being stalked by the evil dead because he released the he read the Necronomicon or the the Necronomicon Necronomicon, yes, yeah, the like de- that. the book of the dead, the book of the dead, and the Necronomicon. She, you know that guy released all that energy yeah. and the, those spirits out in the woods, and that's what it is. And then she gets possessed and starts killing them. And I I love the gore in that movie. It's really good. She mm-hmm. chops off her arm and shit with like a little kitchen saw. Like wow, very very intense movie. Because the evil gets in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The evil p- possesses her hand. She pretty much plays the Ash's part in yeah. it. Yeah, reminds me that uh, of a movie, also a horror movie uh, called Idle Hands. Oh yeah, remember that? Jess Galba was in it. Yeah, and, the and evil Seth Green in his arm. Yeah. Devin Sawa. <coughs> that was a good nineties horror film. That it was more really of a was. funny that was more of a funny It was funny, it was dark. but it was but it, it was, was like also dark comedy. A legit horror film. You know what I right. mean? Right. Like, yeah, that was, was a really good one. I loved it. I watched that so many times. As kid. That's probably where the idea of that movie came from because Bruce Campbell what the thing about Bru- uh, when Bruce Campbell did Evil Dead, if you watch his character Ash in the especially in the second Evil Dead, mm-hmm. okay. He's almost like a Jim Carrey style. Like Jim Carrey did it's the true. same thing. Uh, Ash and Evil Dead f- takes his, grabs his head with the evil hand and flips himself. And he actually did that. He grabbed it and acted like he threw himself right. and he flipped himself. I remember that scene. Jim Carrey did that in Me, Myself, and Irene. Uh-huh. And I, and almost like I was like, did he? Was he inspired by that or what was? Because they were like doing a, a lot of the similar things with uh, you know. No, almost he was, like they were both inspired by, you know becoming that part you know like his he had evil in his hand and his hand grabbed his head and flipped him you know uh, and that's yeah. how he sees it in his head you know and like and the same with jim carrey like he's mm. he you know a, a super like empathetic person and knows all the feelings good bad happy mm-hmm. sad you know and and can use that to reflect something back that he likes or wants right. to show you 
Yeah. And that's what they do. That's how they do it. Like, it's amazing shit. You can't teach it. No, I love the Evil Dead movies. I love the remake, and I wish they would have done maybe even a sequel to the remake just to see what yeah. they can do. But I feel like it would have drawn itself out just like anything movie. else. Yeah. The original two were wonderful, and the third Tree one, the, the third one, Army of Darkness. Yeah, I, I liked it. It was more funny. It went more into comedy. Than the other two, but yeah. I, I liked it. Bruce Campbell is in... And see, like I said, Sam Raimi's one of my favorite directors because he always gets really off the wall but beautiful fucking movies. Right. A lot of people disagree with me on this, but I think the the Great and Powerful Oz that came out on Disney when he did that with James Franco and Mila Kunis. Really? Did you not see that? I, uh, no. It was huge. No. It was the it was a prequel to The Wizard of Oz. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. James Franco's The Wizard of Oz. Yes, 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 yes. That movie was excellent, I thought. And I remember it, that. I remember... Uh, Sam Raimi killed. Yeah. And he did. He puts Bruce Campbell in little parts. He'll always put Bruce Campbell in little parts mm-hmm. of uh, like the car from Evil Dead was the one that uh, um, Peter Parker's uncle drives in the movie. If you watch it, oh. that was the Evil Dead car. They drive up to the cabin. Nice. Little little nuances like that. I always thought that was really cool. And it's it's same thing with Jordan Peele. Like it's weird how pe- people show one side of you, and 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 you see like Sam Raimi's is like you saw all the horror films he was doing. You uh-huh. saw what he was he was excellent at horror films, uh-huh. and then he just he kills at other films too. He's just a really good director. He just knows what he wants. We talked right. about that with Chuck Russell. Chuck Russell did Nightmare on Elm Street three, which killed. It was one of the best horror films ever. And then he goes to do The Mask with Jim Carrey. Right. Completely different, off the wall, but it's uh, one that. of those cl- cult classics. You think, wow. It's not just coincidence that this man's made five or six films that are wonderful. Right. You know, he's just a badass fucking director. Mm-hmm. And it's probably really good writing as well. You know, that's always, you got to have the three, actors, writing, and director. Right. If you have all three of those in line, you're, you're up for like a cult classic. Mm-hmm. You know, something that may not be recognized now, but later it'll be like legend. It will become legend forever. And, you know, I, I but I still love the fact there's people willing to do the old school horror, which is like, you know, Rob Zombie. You've got um, his little trilogy that he's trying to do, and you've got Three from Hell coming out soon. Mm-hmm. So that's got a, I think they s- announced that that's a Halloween release of this year. Nice. It'll come out on October 31st. So I'm going to definitely go see that. But um, get some trick or treat. The only way they can, if, you, if you've kept up with The Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses, the only way to do a third film is to bring Dr. Satan back. And to mix what he, the feeling you, the the nostalgia you have from House of a Thousand Corpses, the lighting, the darkness, the monsters, the the old school style, with that Devil's Rejects raunchy desert, yeah. mix those two somehow and make a third that's both, because those are wonderful films, but they're so different, you know. Um, it's true. The first one's so supernatural and serial killerish and Texas Chainsaw Massacre style. Don't notify me right now. Oh, notifications. That's rude. I'm just kidding. That's not rude. That's uh, 3B Production Company. Go check them out on YouTube. They're excellent. They talk about horror, too. 3B. They were just letting me know. What's up? They're proud to go live. It's Friday. so It's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> the I can't wait to see 3 from Hell, but like I said, the only way they can do that is to bring Dr. Satan back. Dr. Satan revives them, maybe. Um, I don't want it to be this prison film do where you, they're in you, prison the whole time. And do you think that's what they're gonna do? They're gonna the only it, if Rob Zombie knows what's best for his films, he's going to bring Doctor Satan back and he's going to revive them from the Devil's Rejects incident. Right. Because at the end of Devil's Rejects, there's this long drawn out scene at the end of them getting shot up by the police. So you think he's making a third one, and you're like, well, how the fuck are you gonna do that? And the only thing that, and I wasn't the only one because fans are spitting that out constantly. They're like, the only thing we want to see right now out of you from three from hell is that he brings them back to life. Dr. Mm -hmm. Satan does. And then they go around on another killing spree, but they're like invincible almost because they're straight from hell. Damn. Three from hell. I think that'd be a really cool fucking story plot, but chances are he's going to make a, you know, very cheap and, uh, it might add to the story. He says it's he's he's announced and he's being very vocal about how badass this film's going to be. He says this is like the best thing I've ever done. Like right. he's talking um, the Bill Mosley who plays Otis. He's all over the place. Like this is going to be the craziest fucking Rob Zombie film you've ever seen. That's like he's awesome. it's it's House of a Thousand Corpses meets Devil's Rejects into one film. 
Wow. And, and that's kind of what I'm hoping for is like I want to see Dr. Satan again, but I want to see that like Danny Trejo and Diamond Dallas Page style, like right. just people coming in, bounty hunters and realism with the supernatural shit. Right. Just bring that back. Because the first one was very old school horror. Dr. Satan's almost like not real. The... Mm -hmm. The he the guy the miner in the end of the film that's chasing her that almost looks like uh, I think it's their dad, mm -hmm. he almost looks like uh, the fucking My Bloody Valentine, um, uh, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. killer, and uh, but that's still cool. I mean, I like the old school concept, but right. the Devil's Rejects was more of a human aspect of their killers on the run, right? Instead of monsters and shit. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to see him mix that up. That would be cool. Yeah, and I'm glad he's he's adding to that because. I think he's realized, you know, doing a remake and ruining that because <laughs> that's I don't think he ruined Halloween. I think he doing a sequel killed his killed Halloween. It, yeah. If he would have left it at his Halloween remake, I think he would be just fine. But the fact that he made a sequel with the white horse and tried to put his wife in it some more, you can see right through the bullshit. That was a paycheck is what that yep. was. That was retarded. Yep, Pumping it out. Excuse my Spanish. Pumping it out without feeling. He didn't have his heart into it. No. You know, I don't even think he hardly had his heart in the first one. You know, the first one was a decent movie, and it I was a good it. remake. I liked um, it. I, I, I didn't. It. I didn't find any problems in it. I, I thought it was a good way to... I didn't want my money back when I was right. done, you know? I was fine with it. It was yeah. that second one that killed it. I couldn't watch that shit. I've never seen the second one. It's horrible. It's, prob it's, I probably won't then. It's f if you're having fun, sure. Every yeah. film's fun if you're just bored. But, right. you know, almost every film. <laughs> my favorite film Almost. to watch when I'm bored is Return of the Living Dead. I always go back to that film because that's a really fun, it's funny. Right. Uh, I don't like zombies even, but it's just a goofy take on zombies. Right. And even Return of the Living Dead 2 was corny as fuck, but that might be happening outside actually. A zombie apocalypse or something. Yep. Like. yep. It's either a zombie apocalypse or like a race war. Or they found Michael Jackson down the road. Yeah, he was he was buried right beside, you know, Gotti. <laughs> oh, shit, we got you know, we got birth certificates. We, I think we take advantage of all, of of uh, I, well, not we take advantage. I think people in Hollywood take advantage of uh, fans and everything for bucks. They see dollar signs. Yeah, you know, and it's I think that's kind of bullshit. It's true, like I mean, it's 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 a business at, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, show business. Yeah. There's, there's, uh, we were speaking of like uh, zombies and, and goofy zombie movies. We'll talk about Zombie Land too. That movie's not necessarily a horror film, but I like Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson's a shit. <clears throat> when does that come out? When does Zombie Two, well, Zombie Land Two? Zombie Land Two. Because I liked the first one. It was fun. I liked his rules. I even liked Jesse Eisenberg in it. And I'm not a huge Jesse Eisenberg fan. I'm not fan, a huge Jesse Eisenberg But fan I didn't either. mind him in that. Like, that's what was weird. He's I didn't like him as uh, in, in uh, what's the Batman versus Superman playing Lex Luthor. Yeah, I didn't I like him in that. I think he tried way too hard to act. I think that was a grave mistake. It was too, it was it was misingenuous, disingenuous. Disingenuous, His His, for sure. his acting it just was seemed, disingenuous. Yeah, and he just, I don't know what it is. Um... But he just every time I see him like act or like in interviews, he's the same. He's just this, you know. He's always the same person. Thinks, did you did you see him be a, a dick to that chick that was interviewing? Yeah, him? that was what an asshole. I know, dude. Just the dick. He's, he's, he's just a quick, you know. Thinks he's a quick witted. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just a prick. He's just a douchebag. Robot back. prick. I'm like, god damn it. This dude. Zombie Land Two comes out October 11th of this year, oh. and it is directed by Ruben Fletcher. Neat. It's got the same people in it. Um, like I said, I'm a huge Woody Harrelson fan. I uh, I want to see Venom 2. Uh, Tom Hardy has officially signed for a trilogy within the Venom, so there's going to be th two more Venoms. So the next one's going to be with Carnage, and Woody Harrelson's going to play Carnage, and I would assume the third one, Carnage and Venom, team up to go against somebody else. Right. You know, that's usually how films like that go. Uh, just like King, uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. I can't wait to fucking see that movie, but you know exactly how it's going to go. You already know. Yeah. They're going to find each other, fight, and then they're going to realize there's bigger enemies than us, so you want to see them team up, and they come to an agreement like we can run, you know. it's I, I see them going in that direction because yeah. it is what it is. We've seen so many films like that that do that style of, you know, it's just a retelling, really, right. just with different characters. Um, I want to see things like Avengers Endgame. That's not horror at all. Yeah, I want to see that. But I got involved with the Avengers when I saw Infinity War. Mm -hmm. I was like, holy shit, this is actually a really good movie. And it caught my attention. 
and uh, Avengers Endgame is going to be the last Marvel film in a long for a while. Really? For probably a couple of years. Why so? Uh, just to figure out what they're going to do next because oh. they've kind of capped off all of their movies and their tri- they've put so much shit out. You've got to think for the past twenty years they've been pumping really out have. Marvel movies. Oh yeah. DC can't even fucking keep up. That's how big they went with that. They right. went bigger, go home. They fucking ran <laughs> with it, dude. You know, I I still remember going to the Aurora Drive-in theater. Oh well, yeah, we yeah, uh, and seeing uh, <laughs> the original X Men. The X Men, yeah, and X Men Two. The original X Men was my favorite, and then after that, they great. lost me. Like I liked Wolverine in it, uh, the first one with the cigar and the you yeah. know just the angry wolverine that reminded me of the cartoon and then from there he's used wolverine yeah he kind of you know he's cracking jokes in the later ones and it's not as good um they're making a lot of stuff with uh x-men right now and i think they used a little bit of the x-men concept in uh um the deadpool uh, yeah a little bit um and then uh, uh what is that like dark phoenix yeah, That's dark. Yeah, it's a dark new Phoenix X-Men movie. Mm-hmm. Dark, Dirk Phoenix. <laughs> Dirk Bentley. Um, we've got. Speaking of that, the New Mutants. That little. That's a horror film that's coming out about the X Men. Nice. And I thought that was interesting because it's based off that comic. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's pretty, you know, dark, and it's a rated R, right. so we should see some. Have you seen um, previews for that? Uh, uh, Burn bright. Bright burn or something. Bright, Bright burn. burn. That sounds really familiar. It's like a, it's uh, he's Superman, but instead of being a good guy, he's like a crazy schizophrenic kid that's killing people. He can fly. He can, he can because he's so angry. Like he, Bright he burn. He develops all his shit early. He learn, learns how to use it, and like he's mm-hmm. a fucking crazy little kid. I mean, I don't know. That movie comes out this month. Th- that oh, comes out the twenty fourth. Oh shit! Yeah. Yeah. So that's like mere days away when that comes out. Um, Elizabeth Banks is in it. Uh huh. Wow. Yep. Oh, they've got the guy from Breaking Bad in it who plays the goofy. I don't know. I don't even know what the fuck his name was is. Was that about Brian Cranston? No, oh, was not Brian Cranston. Not in that movie, dude. Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Um, <laughs> Lil Wayne's <laughs> not in the film. Uh, yeah, you got he like should have been. you got the the scary stories to tell in the dark, which looks really good. Yeah. Um, of course, Child's Play. Have you seen the stuff for Velvet Buzzsaw? Uh, I it's saw. Like, I it's saw got the Jake Gyllenhaal in it. Uh-huh. Yeah, isn't I that's on, I think that's on Netflix. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks. I mean, I watched the preview like twice already, but I've never clicked on it. Notification. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I gotta turn that shit off. But it's. Uh, <laughs> It looked okay. There's painting coming out. There's some demon or spirit. That was so weird. Connected I, to the paintings. I know. Killing I, people. If it's not Donnie Darko, fuck off. Jake <laughs> Gyllenhaal like killed it in that movie, and then like. Well, what about uh, uh, Brokeback Mountain? Fuck you. I can't. I can't believe you brought that up right now. <laughs> you, you made me this way. I wish I could quit you. I'm this way because of you. <laughs> you want some beans? I, you know, and whatever, they're good actors. They're oh, wonderful yeah. actors. That's great, but it's not something I'm into. The first time I saw him kiss, dude, I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what am I doing? But, uh, no, it's a good movie. Um, I won some awards and shit. There is a movie coming out with John Goodman called Captive State, and it looks like it's... What's that about? Uh, I think aliens come down to Earth and take us over and enslave us. Nice. They like captive state, you know, um, which is always a good idea, you know. Yeah, um, we we could use a nice cleansing, <sighs> a nice little purge. Yeah, but I don't. I, I would like the cleansing to be just the bad people go get rid of the fucking yeah. people that have already well, fucked you up. No, you want to make an omelet? <laughs> you gotta kill a couple hundred gotta thousand kill a couple people. innocent people, you know. Um, this isn't even this isn't even horror, but I'm excited about. Uh, what was the goddamn movie? Now I forgot. It was a uh, oh, son of a bitch. I think it's it's called Bad uh, Good Boys by Seth Rogen. That looks good. Good boys. Oh yeah. Yeah, with the yeah. kids that cuss and shit. <coughs> yep, like little sailors. And we talked about um, uh, Jay and Silent Bob. Uh huh. Yeah, That's gonna be epic. Kevin Smith, Jason Mewes. 
Um, they're re- I think they're remaking Scream too. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully it's better. Hopefully it's better than that uh, Scream shit with uh, the MTV show Emma Emma Roberts and shit. You yeah. Know um, I mean, it, it can't be any worse than that. But uh, have you heard of? Uh, oh fuck! I just lost it, dude. You made me lose my thought of train. The that's train on, rolled off that's on with you. uh, your thoughts on it. Mm-hmm. You passed me this thing and it all went out the window. Everything went gone. Went blank. Um, No, it reminded me of, uh, of a different movie that still correlates, but uh, I can't think of it. I'll think of it in like five minutes and yell it out randomly. How's that sound? Yeah. Dude, as long as we're not making any really good points, sure. Right. Um, did you get to, did we talk, I know we talked about Leprechaun last time, um, but did you watch the, the newest one? The newest Leprechaun? Mm-hmm. No. Leprechaun Returns? No. Okay. Should I watch it? It's worth one time, at least. It's got good graphics in it. Like good, uh, yeah. good kills and stuff like that. Does the solar it, panel splits the guy in half. Does it, uh, correlate with the other? It's a sequel to the first one. To just the very, very first one. Yeah, it's basically part two. It's like Jennifer Aniston's... The character Jennifer Aniston played in it dies of cancer after the events of the first one. And then her daughter moves into the same house with a sorority. And they're trying to, you know, go green, ironically enough, and live off solar panels and a well. The same well the leprechaun died in the first one. The character... the, The guy who played Lyndon Porco, I think is his name... The guy who played Leprechaun did a really good job, I think. Um, a lot of people said he did decent. They were like, really? we didn't have a problem with his Leprechaun. It was more of the writing. What What did that? Um, what the, What the Leprechaun look like in this one? Like an, uh, like a cheaper version of Warwick Davis's. Oh, it, that's all it was. It was he had like a more pointier nose. Um, I I could show you pictures. I'm sure that shit. Oh, it's this one. That shit was uh. It was okay. The f- the film was good, and they got a voiceover for Jennifer Aniston to be in the ending. That's cool. Um, they've got. I don't think it was really Jennifer Aniston. I think they got somebody who sounds like her or something like a voice double. Right. And then um, the guy who played Ozzy, we talked about, was back up in it, and it was a good like. Uh, it was a good if you're if you love the Leprechauns, you got to go into like it knowing it's just one. for fun. Uh, I stopped watching when he. Uh, um, like when he went to Vegas, I watched that one. The third one. Yeah. And then I was like, okay. I love Good. that for what it is. That and was my then, favorite one was the third one. L- Leprechaun 4 in space. That um, was the wackiest. Came out, I could go, uh, I made my dad rent it for me at, uh, the Rainies, yeah. uh, which doesn't exist anymore. And, uh, I, it was, I, I was glad I watched it once. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. Not it's a, fun. Not a leprechaun movie I'd watch over and over, but I but I do enjoy the giant leprechaun hand flipping <laughs> At the, the end, bird yeah. uh, as it floats <laughs> off into space. The, so. I love uh, the hood ones too. I love both the hood ones. The very first hood film, um, well, leprechaun what are the hood in the hoods are about. Like, well, like what's the like? I understand. Like, uh, like is he is he going to some projects? Is what the he... the hood ones it have no continuity with the older ones, which none of the Leprechaun films had continuity anyway. It was just a Leprechaun popping up and doing shit. Um, these the hood films tried to go in a different direction to say he's been like he was just in a subway station uh, with the little medallion from the third Leprechaun, and he was fro like you know he was a statue. And then uh, Ice T's character and another character go in there and discover the flute, and that's how he becomes a music producer oh. and big and famous. And um, the actors in Hood One in the first Hood movie, I have seen that. The I, actors I in that. it were actually really good actors. I remember, I remember the flute. Yeah, dude. Ice T blows the flute, and then he becomes a big. I don't have to watch that. Again. He takes the whole leprechaun and puts it in his his office and shit with the medallion on it, so mm-hmm. he can keep an eye on him. I guess. Yeah. And then they go to rob him. The three get main characters go to rob him because they he they he, try to get on his label and he's a dick. They want flute powers too, bro. Yeah, they find out the flutes, oh. this, so they take it and they start blowing up and becoming really good rappers. And the leprechaun goes to find his gold and all that jazz, you know. But the the very first hood film was actually the the three actors in it. What's his name? Red Grant. Right. Uh, he's a he's a a comedian. 
mm-hmm. who rolls with uh, Cat Williams. Oh, like he's huge now, yeah. but he's he's in he's in that. And it was like the the two act the two other guys that were in it. They were it was like really good acting. And Ice T was in it, dude. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Ice T, bro. Like Ice T is funny as hell. I love his old stuff, like when he first started. Yeah, uh, rapping. That's solid gold shit, dude. I see he's um, a bomb ass rapper. Uh, and then uh, fucking m- one of my most favorite TV shows, Law and Order, Special Victims Unit, bro. He's, yeah, he's the bomb in that motherfucker. He's iconic, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Him and LL Cool J went to do stuff like that. Yeah, you know, uh, fucking LL Cool J, dude. Uh, Deep Blue Sea. Have you seen that movie? Yes, I have. The fucking chemically enhanced sharks. Yeah, like I want to see the Meg. I haven't seen the Meg yet. I haven't seen that either. Uh, the Jason Statham shark movie. I want to see that. I want to see that. I wonder what that's on. Wanna, if anybody out there is actually listening to this, and you can find that for us. The Meg? The Meg. Oh, it's still fairly new. You'd have Just to let us rent know. it. Oh. Well, still. If anything can happen, let us know. <laughs> Maybe we'll rent it one night. We gotta watch that fucking movie. Uh, stuff like that. Stuff like that's awesome. Um you know, the, like we talked about, Lake Placid. I one yeah. of my favorite films that's kind of like a horror film, but it's not. It's like a, a thriller type deal. Uh-huh. Was Arachnophobia one of my all time favorite films? Jeff Daniels, bro. Jeff Daniels is the bomb, dude, dude. I love that movie. Jeff Daniels is underrated what? as a motherfucker. Arachnophobia. I I first watched when I was a little kid uh, on VHS. Yeah, it was uh it was in a box of a bunch of horror movies. I told you that before. My mom yeah. bought it. That was one of them. A giant box of VHS is all horror movies was set on the side of the box. And there's there's probably like 200 tapes in there, bro. Wow. Yeah, dude. And it's just a stash of like old 80s and 70s uh, uh, horror film. Dude, I got I got shit on like Swamps and Frogs, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like all that shit. The Bat People. Yeah. Uh, fucking I got I got two copies of Scream 1 and 2. Wow, it's two in there because we already had a copy of those, right? Like just I only like the all first screen. Tapes, and arachnophobia was in there, dude, and that's the one that would t- end up staying in my uh, little VCR DVD combo. Uh, it's a wonder why they haven't remade that because that seems like a pretty obvious remake. I know, you right, know? dude? Like a very obvious one. There's a, that's a big deal. Arachnophobia. People are so scared of spiders. Oh yeah, and they used real spiders in that motherfucker too. They had a spider wrangler and shit. Oh mm-hmm. my god. Well, that's terrifying. To, of course, like you want the yeah, yeah, these people are here to act, and you're you know, say you're the director. It's like I need to get some fucking you nasty know, bugs up in this bitch. I want to see these. I want to see these people scared, and then yeah. show tell them what to do while they're scared. Yeah, Jeff Daniels when he gets the sh- chills and stuff when he sees them, he's uh-huh. actually he's getting the chills. Them, yeah, man. he's seeing spiders. That's what made that movie so fucking good, dude. Yeah. It was like he he captured that. Scarlett Johansson is in that, ain't she? She's his daughter. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, that's an obvious remake. I don't, I, the, the best scene in that film, what they got perfect about, because it's called arachnophobia. Uh-huh. Of course the spiders are scaring people, but one of the f- biggest phobias within arachnophobia is the biting, the process of them, of the, the fangs going in. Uh-huh. And they showed that when the, when he looks at the spider's face and it, it sticks in with the yeah, fangs. Dude. Whew, that got me. That, that like, makes damn. you like look down at your chips, mm-hmm. man. You're like, oh. And that was like the first five ten minutes of the film yeah that happens the the part where the guy puts on his the old man puts on his slipper and oh, the, it bites him okay okay yeah it's it's it you admit, that movie makes you check everything if you see a spider you panic because oh, of that movie i'm getting like my, my the, the hairs on my arm <laughs> are raising have you seen the oh, video terrible. on youtube where the person smacks the big tarantula that's crawling around in their yeah, kitchen dude. and the, all, all the, the thousands babies, of dude. babies Oh, crawl out. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. I saw a video. Uh, dude had this good sized little spider on his wall, like on his porch, right, right by the front door, mm-hmm. not the handle part, but the part over here, and it's just in that corner. And he's like knocking at the back of a broom, knocks it off there, and it hits the ground, and like he's shining a light on it, like he, and, and it's sparkling. It's like shiny. It's like well, it's a shiny fucking spider, dude. It was all the eyes. It was all the eyes of the thousands of babies on its back. Oh my god! It wasn't. Oh, it wasn't sparkling. It was Jesus. the eyes. Like, oh my dude, god. And he smashed the thing, and, and they just went. Everywhere. Oh wow, that gave me the fucking chills. And then it's just like blowtorch. 
the yeah. there's one where the worm comes out of the tarantula because the tarantula is like fucked up and the yeah. worm comes out of it. Ugh. There's that worm that crawls into grasshoppers and makes them jump into water and kill themselves yeah. and then gets out in the water. I'm like that's wow. psycho. They like control their head and shit and like they flip out and kill themselves. Dude, that's Ooh. bugs are creepy. What if I had an appendage that I could touch you with, like an arm or uh-huh. a hand? <laughs> Like like an appendage you have? <laughs> no, what if it looked like an antenna? I don't want that. Don't you know what I, touch well, me with that I'm thing. Just saying what it, I'm, I'm just saying an appendage, you know? Yeah. And I could I could reach out and, like, make you, like, go make me a soda. That would be weird. And shit, dude. Like, that would be, like, like mind control. That would be a good idea for a horror film. Somebody who can... I have to, like, piggyback would be psychological. I have to figure out somebody doing that remotely. <laughs> What if I split a copy of myself into you when I touched you? You don't put nothing in me. You'll never put anything oh, in me. Oh shit! And then my copy can make a copy, bro. And then and then that copy can make a copy. And then have I've, you? I've got billions of fucking copies, dude. And I can make them do whatever I want. I'm I'm fucking building a giant spaceship and whatnot because. I got a lot of fucking people to feed, man, and I need a planet to are do you, that. Are you are you describing and Rick and Morty? Fucking planets, dude. Are you describing Rick and Morty to me right now? No, that's exactly what that sounds like. Is Rick and fucking Morty? No, I think you gumped me. I didn't gump you. Got something in my eye. No, dude. I was just. Did you know? Okay, when we were talking. Uh, <laughs> no, fuck you. No, I was not gumping you. Did you know? Going back to horror, that It Chapter 2 is claiming to have the bloodiest scene in horror film history. They're claiming this. Who? What? It Chapter 2 oh. is claiming that they have the bloodiest scene in a, in a horror film ever in the whole history of horror films. I wonder what, I wonder what that means. <laughs> I do too, because have you ever seen the movie Dead Alive? Mm, Holy what shit. Is that? What does that mean? That movie's by Peter Jackson. It's a... I think it's a movie about like it's almost like zombies, but they're diseased. I think oh. he like there's so many of them in his living room, and he just takes a lawnmower and mows over them. And that's one of the scenes in Bloods everywhere, like the Shining when the elevator opens, like how and and Nightmare on Elm Street with the bed at the beginning. Right. How are how are you claiming that you have the bloodiest scene in horror movie history? It's probably not the bloodiest. It's probably just as bloody as some of them. Right. You know, that's like, a pretty well, bold claim. Do? Was the geyser going to fuck in? I feel like they're... Come up, cover the neighborhood and Something. Shit? It's got to be something. Right. How for the eastern seaboard was wiped out by blood today? I'm curious. It's going to have to be like a river of blood. It's going to be like a fucking, giant river of blood. Just an ocean and of blood. And be like the Nile and shit and change direction. <laughs> like people can't even bathe like in a, that There's shit. a blood fucking cyclone off the, uh-huh. you know. Try growing your crops with this. <laughs> Assholes. It's, I don't know what they're going to do with that. This reminds me of like, you know, like all the, all that Moses stuff where people are getting plagued and frogs are falling from the sky and oh, fuck it, Yeah. I guess if you, if you, if you believe in that, yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's kind of did, a horror did, story. We were like, talking about arachnophobia. Did you ever see the video in Brazil where the, it was raining spiders and it's because they, Oh. Shoot, they they're the type of spiders that shoot a web out, but it's like a parachute, and they'll fly with the wind. And, and that's what they were doing is they were just like, like migrating. Yeah, they were just migrating, and they were Damn. falling on people and shit. And it was like raining spiders, and it was just webs everywhere. Oh my god, oh. creepy shit! You can find videos like that all the time. I don't want to. Ooh, Ugh. spider infestations. And Yuck, dude. Never. See, I don't know why arachnophobia is such an obvious choice for a remake, and they're sitting over here rebooting fucking shit that's been rebooted already. Arachnophobia has only been one film. Arachnophobia. Yeah, just the one. You know. They never redid it. They will. Give them time. I think, I believe I read an article that said it's getting remade. How old is Jeff Daniels? Oh, he's probably in his, got to be in his late 50s. Possibly. He's still kicking. I I love that dude. I love love how he can keep up with Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, that was. Both uh, the Dumb and Dumber and Dumber Dumber. -er 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 Yeah. Uh, Dumb and Dumber Two. Dumb and Dumber Two, not Dumb and Dumber. Rubber. Yeah. Rubber. That one. That was, was a pretty two different cool. people. Yeah. That one was shitty. Uh, it was. It was nice to see that other side, like you know. But it was a funny movie. They, it had yeah. its funny moments. Like, but, it was definitely. Uh, I'm glad I watched it once. Eugene Levy and Sherry O'Terry in it, and it was yeah. a good. It was a funny movie, but it just wasn't what people wanted to see. 
Really? Sherry O'Terry. I always thought she was a babe. The guy who Sherry O'Terry. You think oh. Sherry O'Terry's a babe? Well, not now. A long time ago, she was a lot bad. That's time. like, <laughs> it's like little thing. Sherry O'Terry. I get. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. Hello, it's weird field. because I think that uh, I think um, Kate McKinnon is kind of cute, and so I'm like, because she's I she's see you quirky. There. I you see know? you there, yeah. I like the quirkiness of it, I guess. That's that's why I have a Dude, crush on Audrey Plaza. That, She's kind of quirky. That's the type of girl that can and will fart in your butthole. She will. I seen her do it. Jesus fuck. Have you seen that movie okay. Masterminds? She, I don't want to she, if it, she that's what happens. She farts in Zach Galifianakis' butthole. Oh, Masterminds. Yeah. yeah. That was a wonder. That had Owen Wilson in it. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good movie. Masterminds. Was I awesome. enjoyed that from start to finish, dude. It was a really good movie. She <laughs> farted in his like, butthole. I like that shit. My favorite scene is when she's taking him to the airport to <laughs> to leave to Mexico, and he turns around. He's got the long blonde, straight hair with like uh-huh. the the yellow Michael Jackson thriller eyes and mm-hmm. like the cat's eyes. <laughs> That's funny as hell. How do I look? How do I look? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that was a funny movie. Um. There's a really funny movie coming out. It looks funny, at least. The Beach Bum with Matthew McConaughey, I saw Snoop Dogg. a preview for that just fucking today. I want to see that. It was a very short preview, but I like it. I was like, I want to see that. He's like, he's putting things on a counter in a convenience store. He's like, you sell acid? And I was like, <laughs> uh, no. And he's like, well, that, that's a bummer. You used to. It'd be better if you did. Uh, It'd be a lot cooler if you did. Yeah, he said, oh, you used to. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. And like, he's outside. Like the other scene, he's just kind of gyrating around having a fun time <laughs> i'm just jigging in, a, in the street what's up fucking matthew mcconaughey wonderful wonderful i'd like to see him do another horror film he i don't uh, he's done uh thrillers and stuff but yeah. and, you know i'm like true detective but i'd like to see him do another style of like texas chainsaw massacre 4 like i want him to play a crazy ass character right i think that'd be his next step and of course we want to see what they do with the next freddy true you know I want to see what they're doing with Chucky. We'll we'll, we'll see that. I've been uh, I've, the sources that's that for the test screening for it to chapter two say that it's not as good as the, the first one, which is kind of obvious with most sequels. Right. But all I care about is the story. Just keep it right simple. Don't try to overcomplicate shit. Just continue the story from the first one. I have a feeling they're gonna try way too hard in this. I love the fact that Bill Hader's in it. What That's if, cool. What if, you know, it actually turns out to be pretty good? You never know. I'm sure it will. Look at all the acting. They have James McAvoy in that James motherfucker, McAvoy. dude. James McAvoy is a beast. <laughs> have you seen Split? Yeah. Fucking tell me that dude ain't a good actor. Fucking James, tell James me. James McAvoy makes anything good. Holy shit. He will shit. take a piece of shit and unfold a brick of gold. <laughs> I am telling you, dude. Like M. Night Shamalamalamalamalam. Shamalamalams. Uh, had that fucking he when, when he he I wish he was a better director and whatnot because Split could have been so much more badass. You didn't think it was already? Fucking I loved it. Okay, sick? Like, like I won't lie about it, but I'm still mad. That's what makes me want to see I'm, Glass, dude. I'm, I'm still mad at M Night for uh, the Last Airbender. He really. Oh god, like, damn the Airbender! It was like watching somebody chop something up. Isn't and that? Blush it, isn't dude. that Nickelodeon shit though? Like he directed it. <laughs> He should have <laughs> left it to Nickelodeon, bro. Give it to Dan Schneider. It'd be a bunch of Naruto feet in there. They did shit. like, oh my god, that was like, that was like three long ass seasons, the whole cartoon and you know and, and shit, and then the one movie tanked. <laughs> I can't say much because I don't give a flying fuck about the Airbender. <laughs> to be kind honest, I just well, I don't. I understand either, your passion, though. but you know, I get I, it. My 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 nephew was in, into that shit, and I watched a lot with him. And it was fun, but he really like he just it was terrible. It was terrible. It was terrible. You know what? And and we've talked about this but every I do time. Like signs, I like the six signs. signs. I liked signs. Uh, that was Mel Gibson was I in there. Signs. Wasn't he? Yeah, it was signs was super right. cheesy and shit. But I loved the depiction. I didn't of the like. Aliens, uh, I like didn't like the looked. village. I didn't like the village either. I kind of knew it was gonna happen. I didn't like the village. I mm. there's not a lot that he does other than the few. Yeah. Like I liked Unbreakable, I liked, I liked Split, and I want to see Glass. I wish Unbreakable was kind of like a shorter movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, some most of his movies you wish were shorter. <laughs> like he like, but I love the whole idea of that. Like, not only was he just strong and impervious, he 
he could, you know, barely brush up against somebody and not only identify that he has a gun, but what color, what the handle looks like, how many bullets are inside. Did M. Night Shyamalan do Sixth Sense? He did. Was that him? Yeah. Yeah, that was what I thought. That, that was the movie that made everybody know him. That was right. his blowout. That was the one that's done the best for him. That's ever. a crazy movie. Ever. That's his biggest movie. I like Haley. Uh, Haley Joel Haley. Osment was in Tusk. Yeah. Uh, that Kevin oh, Smith man, film. That, Tusk that was awesome. That movie was so fucked up, dude. Tusk was awesome. Uh, I was sitting there watching that shit, dude. Like, that poor guy. The actor who plays the old man is in a bunch of films, okay? Yeah. I've, I've seen him before in other stuff. I've that man that can act his fucking ass he off. He can too, and so can uh, Justin, Justin Long. Long. Yeah, Justin dude. Long killed it that every time. That dude kills it every time, whatever, whatever he's in. I love The it, best. Love him in the movie, Waiting. Waiting so was awesome. Hilarious, uh, he was in Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers Creepers, man. Um, love that shit. One of his, his best characters I've ever watched was on Zack and Mary, Make a Porno. Second when he plays the gay out. porn star. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> I love that. He's awesome. Uh, Accepted. I love Accepted. Yeah. That's a film that doesn't get talked about a lot. That movie was great. That's your shout out to Accepted. Glenn's Chocolate Wad. <laughs> Eat some. Eat some. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, he was in he was in Jeepers Creepers. He was in um, I, I love that Tusk. movie. Yeah, that's I, one of my most favorite. I hate to say it because I know you've seen a lot of horror films, but like that's... One of the most, I don't say the most, it's the horror film that I've really enjoyed watching the most and watch it over and over. Tusk is madness. Uh, well, Tusk I can't, but Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers Creepers? Yeah, it was kind of sad to find out that the guy who made that and created it was a pedophile. I didn't know that. He, it came out, I didn't all these allegations, and the third one was actually boycotted because of it. Oh. And so it kind of fucked up Jeepers Creepers, and that went straight to Netflix because nobody was going to take it. Wow. And it's sad because all that, you got to, sometimes we got to separate things like that from the man, you know, the art. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't all him either. The actors were involved, and they probably didn't were unaware of it. I'm sure there was a couple art departments, set designers. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything. A whole crew. Yeah. It takes more than one person. So I mean, you know, you can still watch the movie, and you're not you're not supporting. I mean, don't don't buy it if you don't want to support well, him. I but might, I might buy myself a copy of Jeepers Creepers because the first one, it's a know. good classic movie. It's a good horror film. But yeah. I don't think that as I'm I'm any I'm in any way financing a pedophile do you think he still gets royalty oh i'm sure he's i don't know what's going on with him Maybe i, I heard that i heard I that mean, and then, then i heard people complaining about the third one and i was like man that's not the actors and all that man, that's not their fault i didn't like, really know i didn't really know all this like all this time dude i mean that that first i did, i watched the second one i was like yeah like and i didn't watch the third one the fans want him to pass that movie to somebody else they're like yeah. give the rights to somebody else give it to somebody so they can continue it I'm because sure, like it's tainted i feel like it's tainted if somebody like could get it and remake it no no matter how good their remake is there's always going to be that uh side comment that question asked when press comes yeah or when people know you personally and talk mm-hmm. to you about it. it's like hey you know the elephant in the room you know everyone knows that Yes, but I do believe that if it was remade and remade sick, like just a dark fucking, right. just make him scary. I, yeah, sure, it could it could definitely bypass all that rumor and shit like that. Not rumor, but like. Do you uh, think all so? The, do you really think so that it could? It would still be there. It's uh, never gonna leave. But I think it would be dimmed if it overshadowed it. It yeah. can overshadow it. And and it's like because that has nothing to do with this other than it's a remake of that film. Right. You know, they could do the Jeeper, Jeepers Creepers and, and just do one film and do a mm-hmm. remake, but make it fucking get, bring the truck, right? bring all this, bring more to it, maybe add your own little flavor to it and make it overshadow all that. Right. It can happen. You know, yeah. the right remake will overshadow it's true. The, the original film. I hope so. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the one of them that overshadows the original. Fans, deep fans, love the original. They they like the remake, but they stick with the original. Right. I love the older ones. I love all four of the older ones. They were wonderful. Uh, they're corny as fuck, but all of them oh, are. That's true. That's uh, how it but was. the but the two remakes that came out were wonderful. Nice. Like they they aced with the remakes. So, you know, and it's all it's Arlie. 
Ermy, what's his name? Lee. Oh. The. I hate that I'm fucking I'm fucking well, that we up. We didn't know we were gonna bring this up. Right? No, <laughs> you. Everybody knows who I'm talking about, though. Yeah. Uh, full Metal Jacket guy. I'm saying his name wrong. The uh, Eli Eli Ermy or something, uh, something like the, that. The uh, sergeant guy. Mm-hmm. You suck a shit. He's awesome in those films. Yeah. You're more scared of him than you are Leatherface. You're like dude. Jesus, fuck, I'm like a sick pervert. Who's eating meat? Crazy dude. I like that how the beginning told the story about how they're eating people because you know the, everything shut down and that's an abandoned part. So they just you know mm-hmm. they took our food source, so we'll just eat people. Damn, which is kind of weird, but I like the cannibal aspect of it, and I like the wow. fact that Leatherface was a beast in that one. He wasn't like some lipstick wearing weirdo, right? But you know, whatever. Teach his own. Yeah. To each eat a Cheeto. To each eat a Cheeto. Or have a bagel bite. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by OPMS Kratom and Anchor Fence. Anchor Fence. I forgot to say that. We'll say it now. OPMS Fuck it. Kratom and Anchor Fence, we thank you. You know what? We'll close out with that because I think, I think as far as horror goes, we could talk about a lot of stuff, but it would be right. redundant to the first episode. True. We're going to wait to see these films that we've talked about come out, and then we'll maybe do a three after we've seen all of them. It'll probably be an end of the year right. thing. You know, and maybe we'll do a special on all the films that we've talked about that are coming out. That way it's a fresh new take on horror instead right. of talking about everything we've been talking about. Because I could go for days. Right. We could talk about Troll. We could talk about <laughs> <laughs> Puppet Master. We could talk about everything. Right. And, and I just, it would probably bore a lot of people, the pointless shit I know about these films. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll just leave it at that. Um, but anyway... That was Horror 2. That was CNL Podcast. Cotter and Lau. We'll come at you with uh, episode 11. This was episode X. Episode. We're going to call it the X Factor. Episode X. No, no, let's not. (laughs) Let's not call it that. (laughs) Why not? Nobody listens to the end of the episode, bro. (laughs) Okay. We won't call Uh, it the X Factor, but we'll call it just the X. Comment. We're going to call it X. We're going to give it to you. (laughs) We're going to give it to you. (laughs) All right. That was CNL. We love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Peace.